Hey all. If you're here to see a grown man rant about Barbies for ten and a half minutes, you've come to the right place. I just got back home from the gym, and whenever I go work out, I drop by a Miller that's close by to check out the Barbie aisle and see what new stuff they got in stock. Currently on the lookout for those beautiful Dreamtopia mermaids designed by Angel Kent because they were supposed to come out November first, but I haven't seen them yet. So it's gonna be any day that retailers might start to stock them. Today I found something very exciting for me. If you checked out my news video, you might know that I was really looking forward to a new set of budget Barbies. In particular, this beautiful budget Barbie with a shiny face mold. She's one that I looked forward to, and I can already say that I have some thoughts about this budget release. Miller only had her and Millie. I had seen the Millie a week ago, there are two of her, and the print on the dress is always different from door to door, so you might have to check out what type of print is the one that you favor. But today they also stocked this beautiful shiny door, so I was super excited to get my hands on her. Now the thing with this release is you might see that it's an open window. It's 100% cardboard, which I'm totally a fan of. This is the future of doll packaging in my opinion, and it should stay that way. This also allows me to check out the hair quality. And with both the Shani as well as the Milly, I can say that both of them have polypropylene hair. I'm quite surprised, especially with the Milly doll, because I barely know a single blonde Milly with just a natural hairstyle that has polypropylene. Even the blonde Barbie extra mini mini doll that was supposed to be the stereotypical Barbie had saran hair. And this brunette doll should also have saran hair in my opinion. Like, I just, I just don't know what's going on there. Did Monster High all of a sudden bought all of the saran supplies for themselves? Budget Barbies usually always have pixel free screenings, and beautiful saran hair because most of the time the hair is short so it's mid-length so tail is not like going to cheap out on giving them good hair quality. This release they kind of dropped a ball there. Still she's looking very cute and I'm still very excited to open her up so let's go. Before we open her up let's just quickly check out her packaging design because the packaging design is very cute and you can immediately check out her screening which is also very handy so i don't need to check out a screening when i take her out because of some kind of glare though you might see that she does suffer from heavy pixelation due to the uv resin printing method they used on her which is unfortunate because she's got a very cute face and if there's not a ring light throwing light on her she does look much cuter in person so yeah it does seem very bad on screen but in person it's not as bad as you might think and since this was the only shiny they had i'm glad that she's not super wonky she seems to have her eyes and brows and lips printed and the mold where it's supposed to belong. On the top of the cardboard packaging you can see the Barbie 65 years inspiring stories shaping the future which is meant to start next year when we have the 65th anniversary of Barbie celebrating her anniversary and six decades in the toy business. You can see the tabs that they've shot through the cardboard packaging to have her head be secured. So this doll's uh, assembly production code is this one. So who knows, maybe later on we'll have dolls from this wave that have saran hair. So this might come in handy if you want to compare them. This is the barcode as well as the assortment number. On the bottom it's just pink. You can just see the refresh of the Barbie logo, all of the glittery goodness. 
printed on each side. Yep, there's not much else to it, so let's take her out. There she is. If you need to see the cute shoes she's got going on here, they have more of a salmon coral color. I have these shoes. Um, I think the fashionista in the back, she has those shoes too. And a translucent teal color. And the pink striped swimsuit Barbie. A day at the beach Barbie, she has these heels too in a pink color. But this is more of a salmony coral tone. And you can see the beautiful dress with all of the arrows of Barbie printed on it. And the print goes all the way around, which is pretty good. It's just one piece stretch fabric, no velcro, and it's hemmed by having it be surged with an overlock sewing machine so they didn't fold any kind of fabric they just used this type of uh, surging method to hem it so let's take off the elastic shout out to everyone who keeps the elastic um the type of person who doesn't um, snip the elastic away i'll just keep it because it always comes in handy having elastics for doll hair styling and these are very sturdy elastics because sometimes when you buy elastics from a craft store they immediately just pop so now that she's free you can see yeah the hair situation is bad it's pretty bad i mean the hair color is cute it's got this brunette tone to it my camera doesn't pick it up it looks pretty black on camera but overall it's more of a brown tone. It's pretty brownish. And yeah, I mean the hair color is perfect the way it is. It's just that the hair quality that they used on the store is abysmal. And the doll has the standard body with heeled feet and the standard five points of articulation with full rotation on her head as well as rotation on her arms and she can move her legs up and down. And now for a quick facial comparison between a classic shiny face from the 90s and the one that we've got now. And the mold is similar but not identical as you can see. Um, her nose is, I don't know, different and the spacing between mouth and nose is also different. And if she didn't suffer from pixel face, I'd say she had a very cute screening. So it's just very unfortunate that Mattel couldn't um, give her the type of screening that this beautiful doll deserves. You can see the back of the head has a marking of 1990 Mattel. And this is the coat that's stamped on her body. And as far as made to move matches go, she's a bit darker than the purple tie-dye yoga made to move body. She's got the skin tone of the Butterfly dress, um, Christy doll that I got there in the pink dress. And it's a skin tone that's also um, similar to the one Barbie Extra doll with the two Afro Puffs. So if you want her to have just standard articulation, you can also use that one. So I believe that this is all that I can say about this release. I mean, it's a budget doll, so it's not going to be a whole lot to it. Am I disappointed? Yes, I am. Do I like her? Yes, I do. But I recommend her to people who want to get a cute doll, the high heels, on a standard body, the very cute Barbie logo dress.
Absolutely. Would I recommend her to people who do not like pixel face and do not like polypropylene hair? Absolutely not. So in the end, it's up to you to decide whether you're going to be like, okay, those are the negatives, those are the positives, and whether you're going to get her or not. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you thought this video was trash, leave a dislike. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And we might see you in my next video. Bye for now.